Good afternoon. Welcome to the 2022-2023 Outstanding Faculty Mentor Awards. Thank you for being here with us this afternoon. I am Amanda Athey, Director of the Professional Development and Engagement Team in the Graduate College. I have had the great fortune of being involved with the Outstanding Faculty Mentor Awards program since 2020. Since 1987, the Graduate College has recognized mentorship as a critical part of a scholar's professional development. In the 35 plus years of this awards program, you can trace the evolution of the research and understanding of the role, impact, and representation of the mentors who are instrumental to the success of advanced scholars. As an example, between 1987 and 1994, there were 10 awardees selected. Two of the 10 were female. Successive awardees have begun to reflect our students a little more each year. More recently, the Graduate College added award categories to recognize the contributions of faculty at different ranks to the mentorship of postdoctoral scholars and master's students, as well as for doctoral students. In 2020, the Graduate College expanded the vision of the awards program to form the Graduate Faculty Mentor Academy, a body of faculty previously recognized for mentorship. Today, Associate Dean Underreiner led our first induction of this year's award recipients into this assembly of esteemed peers who will lead the effort to share the value and practice of effective mentoring within the university. I would like to ask the members of the Graduate Faculty Mentor Academy here today to please rise for a round of applause in recognition of your contribution to mentorship. Before we move on to recognize this year's awardees, I will invite Vice Provost and Dean of the Graduate College, Elizabeth Wentz, to share her thoughts on the value of mentorship in graduate education. Thank you, um, thank you, Amanda, for the opportunity to speak to everybody here and putting me on the calendar. And, uh, and thank you all for, for joining us today. Um, this is probably one of my, there's so many distinguished awards, well not too many, but so many distinguished awards um, here at the university and nationally, and to me this is one of the most important ones, and uh, so it's really an honor for me to be able to, to speak to you about this. Um, before I say too much, um, I'd first like to thank um, our graduate college staff, particularly the graduate student communication and marketing team, as well as our professional development and engagement teams for coordinating and hosting this event. So please join me in thanking them for their work. In addition to those team members, there are also quite a few other of the staff from the graduate college um, who are able to come today and attend. So if you are a member of the grad college staff, could you please stand and be recognized? And Amanda's still standing, so. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about mentorship and grad education. Um, and there are some, a lot of different definitions, and one of them that I think is particularly interesting is really from the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine. It says that mentorship is a professional working alliance in which individuals work together, and I think that's a key phrase, over time to support the personal and professional growth, development, and success of the relational partners through the provision of career and psychosocial support. That's a pretty um, significant uh, contribution that all of you make. Um, this def definition really reflects a growing awareness of a relationship that is really reciprocal. And I think that's one of the things that I have found to be really true. You know, you think about professor and you are a professor who you profess your knowledge on to those around you. And I think we've really seen a significant evolution on what that means. And I think the idea of mentorship really reflects that. that us as mentors really learn as much from, from our students, our postdocs, our graduate students, um, our children in some cases, as they learn from us. And when you embrace that uh, reciprocal approach, 
you have an adaptive mind and always willing to rethink and relearn. In fact, I'm right now reading this book um, called, uh, hmm, his name's Adam Grant, Rethinking Something or Other. Somebody could probably look that up for me. I should have taken notes on it because I knew I'd forget. Um, but it's a really fantastic book that really talks about how when you have an adaptive ability, an adaptive mindset, that you're willing to then change and grow and learn uh, through the course of time. And I think that individuals who are mentors who reflect this uh, reciprocal exchange of ideas and knowledge uh, really embody that idea of, of rethinking. So it's also um, an opportunity for um, us to really think about who we are and the legacy that we have. When we look around at, you know, at, at our, our our futures and our past, what we think about is the way, the way that we've impacted people um, and the legacy that we create. And I can't think of any other way to think about our legacy other than to think about the people that we, we have been mentored. Most studies show that if you think about um, mentorship, you know, one key piece of this is keeping, keeping us on track, keeping things moving forward. Um, and it's really knowing that if you have a mentor, that somebody has your back and has, is there to you know, help guide you in the most um, profound way. And I think one of the things, too, that, that I've learned from the development of the presidential grad assistantships and the presidential postdoctoral fellowships is that oftentimes it's not about having a single mentor, but having mentors in different spaces. You might have someone who mentors you in, in one way um, because of their particular knowledge um, on a subject matter, or you might have a different mentor because they are in, or a peer mentor because of the career stage they're in, or because of the, the similar life path that, um, that you were able to take together. And so I actually really appreciate the fact that this mentoring academy is really starting to build and, and have fruition because we can think much more about what a mentoring network looks like as opposed to this is my mentor and they're going to be the ones who tell me what my path is like. So we are here um, to, of course, celebrate uh, the idea of mentorship and listen to the stories and the different kinds of philosophies, teaching philosophies, mentoring philosophies that our featured faculty mentors have. I'm thinking about how all of us have these common goals and creating a more vibrant community. So thanks for coming and thanks for the opportunity to, to speak to all of you. Thank you, Dean Wenz, for your leadership and inspiration. This afternoon, we honor faculty recognized by their graduate students or postdoctoral scholars as outstanding mentors. Over the past years, as the critical importance of mentorship has been increasingly recognized, we have watched the Outstanding Faculty Mentor Awards grow tremendously. This year, we had over 250 nominations, and it has been one of our most competitive and diverse pools yet. The Graduate College recognizes excellence in mentorship within four categories. The Outstanding Doctoral Mentor, Outstanding Master's Mentor, Outstanding Instructional Faculty Mentor, and Outstanding Postdoctoral Mentor. This year's awardees were selected after a rigorous review process. Our review committee included previous Outstanding Faculty Mentor Award recipients and nominees all faculty recognized by their peers and students as outstanding mentors. They evaluated nomination files that included letters of support from nominating students and postdoctoral scholars, letters of endorsement from their faculty chairs or directors, and their own mentoring philosophy narratives. We would like to thank these faculty review committee members for their service and to acknowledge their own outstanding mentorship. The work you've done this season has been invaluable. Now, it's time to introduce our 2022-2023 Outstanding Faculty Mentors. This year's nominee pool was not only extensive, but also impressive in its diversity, advanced scholarship, and dedication to the success of graduate students and postdoctoral scholars. As an illustration of the excellence of this year's awardees, 
I'd like to share some of what we heard from the scholars who nominated them. As part of the nomination process, we asked what about their mentor they would like to put into practice as future mentors themselves. Here's a compilation of what we heard. I want to emulate my mentor's passion and efforts to mentor students holistically, especially for students coming from disadvantaged backgrounds. Their mentorship not only increased the access to higher education for underprivileged students, but also enhanced the inclusive excellence of students after they started their programs. My mentor excels in listening to students. I want to make sure that I'm also able to see students' strengths and weaknesses just like they do, so that I could guide others to meet their individual aspirations. I have learned that it is possible to be disabled and valued because I'm disabled, not in spite of it. I've learned my perspective is unique, important, and valued in my field. I've also learned how impactful a collaborative relationship with a mentor can be. I've always loved learning from my professors, but I also learned my professors can learn from me. The confidence this has given me has encouraged me to take more risks, think more creatively, and push myself. And finally, my mentor has been an excellent example in how to be an effective mentor, particularly for BIPOC students. The most important lesson in effective mentoring that my mentor has taught me is to always consider the entirety of a mentee's life, not just who they are in their academic lives. I believe that doing so reflects a strong commitment to the mentee and is the best way to ensure that a mentee is successful. I also believe that doing so is instrumental in fostering mutual respect and trust and can not only create a sense of belonging, but can also mitigate feelings of isolation, stress, and imposter syndrome. I have experienced firsthand the importance of having a mentor who approaches mentoring in a holistic way, and I hope to continue that tradition with my own mentees in the future. Thank you to these nominators for allowing me to share their statements here today. I hope this has whet your appetite to hear from these outstanding mentors. After today's program, I would also like to encourage you to read our recipients' mentoring philosophies on our website. There are QR codes in the room that you can use to scan and view them. In addition to an outstanding faculty mentor medallion, each recipient will receive funding to support their research and professional development from the graduate college. We've asked each men outstanding mentor to prepare brief remarks on the critical nature of mentorship and the importance of creating robust mentoring communities. To honor the bonds of the mentor and mentee relationships, this year we've asked that our nominating students introduce their faculty mentors. Nominating students of awardees, please come to the podium when introduced. Recipients, after you've been introduced, please come to the podium to receive your award and share your remarks. This year's outstanding doctoral mentor is Dr. Wei Li. Introducing Dr. Li is Yining Tan. Wei Li received her Geography Bachelor of Science and Master of Science degrees in Beijing, China, and her PhD in Geography at the University of Southern California. She's professor at the Asian Pacific American Studies, School of Social Transformation, and School of Geographical Sciences and Urban Planning at Arizona State University. Her full site of research are migration and integration and transnational connections focusing on the Indo-Pacific region. She's the author, editor, co-editor, translator, and co-translator of seven scholarly books, four journals, theme issues, and has 157 other academic publications. Her research has been funded by the National Science Foundation, Canadian government, Fulbright Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation, and the National Bureau of Asian Research and Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars, among other internal grants. She has recently been awarded as an AAG Fellow by the, by the American Association of Geographers in recognizing her exceptional work in mentoring and advising graduate students and junior colleagues, including an extensive record of co-presenting and co-authoring papers with her students. She was previously the recipient of Outstanding Faculty Mentor Award 
ASU Faculty Women's Association, AAG Roundout Abler Distinguished Service Honors, Distinguished Ethnic Geography Career Award, Distinguished Scholar Award, Ethnic Geography Specialty Group, and the 2009 Book Award in Social Sciences, Association for Asian American Studies. It is my honor to present this award to Dr. Lee. Dr. Lee, please come to the stage. Thank you, Dr. Tan and Xiao Jie for nominating me twice. And I also thank, want to thank Dean Wenz and Graduate College for this tremendous honor. And I'm so humbled to receive this. We all know PhD year are some important years in one's academic development and the personal life. So I want to thank all my PhD students to give me the opportunity to work with them and to grow with them. I also want to thank my peer and my own mentors to help me to do the mentor work and benefit from them, learning from them. I also want to congratulate all my fellow awardees this year and the previous years and all nom nominees. They have done great work as well. Uh, I just want to say we all know mental and physical health are the important foundation to do good work. So here in my three minutes, I want to share with you a story. I had an outstanding undergraduate student. This is actually related with, with Pipeline. Uh, he is a first generation Latinx student, my best ever undergraduate student. After taking one course from me, he decided to, co uh, to double major in APAS. And he repeatedly told me he want to get a PhD himself. He want to be a professor so that he can help students like him. So I really hope I can be with him in his entire journey. So I kind of took him under my wing, involved him in my Na National Science Foundation project. And also when I did some DEI work at GSAP, geography and urban planning, and he was an important part of it. He has done tremendously until COVID-19 hit, and he suffered some mental issues. And despite my best efforts, I was trying to seek help within ASU as well as professional help outside ASU. He eventually left ASU without a bachelor degree. So that was my biggest regret in my 22 years ASU career. Also that struck me that we all need to genuinely and deeply care those around us, our own family, our friends, our students, our peer, and our superior, so that we can all be in this journey together and in hoping to get the best possible result. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Lee, for your service, commitment, and your remarks. And now, this, uh, this year's outstanding master's mentor is Dr. Adela Grando. Introducing Dr. Grando as her nominating student, Ishka Amanda. Maria Adela Grando applies computer science to medicine. 
She builds technologies to empower patients' healthcare decisions and choices. Her work focuses on those usually excluded from research, Latinx individuals and patients with behavioral health conditions, including serious mental illnesses. Her work has been funded by ASU, Mayo Clinic, and NIH. Through her research, she provides master's and doctoral students with hands-on, community-based learning and training opportunities. It is my honor to present this award to Dr. Grando. Dr. Grando, please come to the stage. Well, thank you, Ishka, so much for that very nice introduction. And Ishka is a student in our Master in Biomedical Informatics program at the College of Health Solutions. And uh, I bet here in the audience we have uh, many others like me who teach master students, or some of you are master students, or you completed your master studies. So you know how tough it is to go through a master study. Uh, it's quite intense, and you know, professors, we want to pack as much knowledge as possible in two years, right? Uh, and we want the students to graduate uh, and to learn all these new, advanced, complex concepts, uh, and you want to master, we want them to master this knowledge. And that's a lot to ask, uh, especially because, uh, you know, students are just not studying. That's the only, not the only thing they do. They also have jobs, sometimes more than one job. Sometimes they care, take care of their families. They have babies. They're caregivers. Or they go through very difficult financial or personal situations. We all have had one or more students uh, in those circumstances, so we know that. So it's important the, the role of the mentor to be there for them and to understand all those things. Um, and yes, I am a mentor of master students. But very often, they are mentoring me, too. I learn so much from them. They are examples of perseverance, dedication, hard work, motivation. And um, you know, sometimes we forget uh, you know, uh, that we are all capable of doing exceptional things when we love what we do and we are passionate what we, about what we do. So they teach me that every day. So I'm very grateful for them uh, for being my role models. And I'm very lucky today to have all this table with all my students. So wonderful. And, uh